Kiara, Namaste, Assalamualaikum, Sastriakal, Kemcho, Varakam, Nisa Bulavinaka, Ayombowan. Welcome to COP Chat. This is Jessica Puang, the Ethnic Responsiveness Manager for Tamaki Makoro for the New Zealand Police. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank APNA TV for giving us the opportunity to use this platform to reach out to the communities. Today, I have the privilege of inviting Inspector Scott Webb to have a chat with me. Welcome, Inspector Scott Webb. So, how's your day today? Sure, Jessica. Um, thanks for having me here. Uh, I've had a great day today. So yes, far. okay. So, uh, Inspector Scott Webb, tell us a little bit about uh, your role. Okay, my role is the uh, Road Policing Manager for Tamaki Makoto. So that essentially is the entire uh, Auckland roading network uh, from far north, uh, north of uh, Kaiwaka. Uh, right Where now, is Kaiwaka? Kaiwaka is north of Wellsford. Wellsford, Wellsford all right, yep. okay. Uh, and it extends right down to uh, beyond the bomb base. Oh, wow, that's a big area you cover. Yeah. Including okay. the, whole, uh, the whole motorway network. Ah. Right. How long have you been a police? Um, 34 years. 34? That's a long time. long time. And you know what? Every time I speak to uh, some officers, they're always telling me 25 years, 30 years, 42 years. And I thought, wow, this is a long time to work for one organization. And what does it prove? It proves that New Zealand police is a good place to work. What made you join the police? Uh, it was actually a car accident, Jessica, oh? where I was, <laughs> um, I was a passenger in a car where we were struck by a drunk driver travelling at high speed um, late at night and um, my mate and myself had some serious injuries and okay. were admitted to hospital and then there was a follow-up inquiry by the police uh, and I was interested in the questions they were answering and it went through a court process and I was really uh, really impressed with the police and that's what got me interested. Uh, mm. Was it difficult at that time? We're talking about 34 years. In those days, I, be I believe there isn't that much of support like now. Nowadays, there's lots of support for people mm. to join the police. In those days, was it difficult? Uh, Were you physically fit? <laughs> yes, I must have been. All right, uh, okay. Yes, uh, but I had to work. I had to work uh, at fitness. Um, but it was something that I, I kind of always wanted to do. And yeah, it, it, was, it wasn't easy. Yeah. Uh, and the process took about a year, took a year to go through the actual entry process. A year, so yeah, it's about the same now and, and especially for our ethnic people, um, some of them are very shy, so even taking that time to, to, to really get used to joining the police uh, takes a couple of months for yes. them to really massage into them the idea of joining into the police. Yeah. Okay. Um, Inspector Webb, the, the fact is holidays are coming, all right, uh, approaching very soon. And obviously, we want everyone to be safe on the roads. So I like to um, emphasize on holiday road safety today with you. And um, if I was planning to go on a holiday around New Zealand, all right, I'm not going abroad. I want to go around New Zealand, but I'm going to drive. What are some of the things I should prepare? Well, firstly, uh, you need to prepare and check your vehicle. Uh, and one of the most important things on the vehicle are the tyres. And make mm -hmm. sure that you have the um, required tyre depth. How, where do I go to check that? You can go into uh, any uh, tyre shop or stop uh, and speak to any uh, police officer on the road. Uh, a lot of them carry like a, a little small, a small um, attachment to the key ring which is able to measure the tyre okay. depth, the tread depth. But if, you, if anyone called into a, a tyre shop or a warrant of fitness place, um, they will tell you and give advice on, on the tyres. So the tyres are very, very important. Mm. Uh, another important part is to check the uh, wipers. Let me interrupt you, uh, Inspector. When you say the tyres are very, very important, now, as a, a lay person, we drive every day, I use my car every day. In my mind, my car is safe. Mm. So what m will make me think that I need to go and check my tires? Why is it that important? Um, ultimately, that keeps the vehicle on the road. And um, traveling, uh, particularly in the wet, like we've had um, 
we've had some uh, lots of rain and we're going into a warm season and sun so the roads will be very greasy and slippery lots of rain and then in the sun the roads will be greasy so this is something that we, we never even think of mm. yep and yeah, and don't forget, it's, it's not just the urban driving, it's the, the rural roads. Yeah. So uh, in New Zealand, as you know, we have lots of uh, roads with curves and corners. They're not all straight I know, roads. and then they have these little hills. Yes. And you, you thought that there's no car, but suddenly when you go nearer, there's a, an oncoming yes. car coming. Eh? Yeah. And some of the roads are very narrow as well, and uh, some people travel too fast. So, so really check the tyres are really important. Okay. So... Apart from checking tyres, what else can I do to prepare? I would check the, um, the wipers. Um, if you get sudden downpours of rain, which we're prone to in, in New Zealand, um, you've got to have wipers that work and operate efficiently. Um, the other part, uh, very important, are the, the restraints and your seat belts. Mm. Check that they work. Particularly if you've got uh, restraint seats for small children, Mm. or babies, just check that they are secured and fa fastened in the vehicle properly. Those would be the main things I would check. Obviously you have to have a, a warrant of fitness uh, that says that your vehicle's um, up to warrant of fitness standard to use on the road. Mm. But the basics would be the tyres, the wipers and the restraints. Okay, I think that's uh, uh, good advice. I suppose uh, do you find many people not wearing seat belts? Yeah, there's you, a lot. Is it? There's a lot, okay. yes. Because I always wear my seat belt, yeah. so I never would think that people are silly enough yeah. not to wear the seat, seat belt. Because we've seen those video clips before that how a person, could, uh, during a crash, the impact is so bad that a human being of uh, an average size could actually fly through the windscreen. Is that right? That's right, and um, we've been we've seen examples where uh, young children or babies in the in the car seat capsule in the in the yep. seat has been propelled through the car and right through a windscreen like a missile. Wow! Uh, and it's also dangerous, um, obviously, to the to the baby, but also the other occupants of the car as it comes through, it can hit them. Mm. Um, so we do still see a lot of people not wearing their their seat belts. Uh, and we've recently had some strong campaigns on the restraint wearing, so seat belts, and also making sure that the, the children are fastened in the vehicle as well. So, um, Inspector Webb, sometimes, uh, say for example, I want to go to Rotorua, and uh, I would think that, yeah, uh, Rotorua is not far, it's about two and a half, three hours away. So, is there anything that you think I should plan if I know that my destination is at Rotorua? Yeah, sure. Um, you should plan the route or, or have some idea of which way you're going to go. Um, and obviously through Google Maps and some or, or other maps to, to know the route, but uh, add extra time. In extra case, time? Extra time, uh, particularly leaving the big centres uh, where it goes into the rural roads, it can get quite congested. And also, uh, you come across roadworks, so you can go to the NZTA site mm. uh, on your phone and download an app, and it will tell you where the roadworks are, um, and it's kept up to date. And it also lets you know of any um, incidents that may happen. <laughs> so you need to. Um, what my advice to people is is to don't rush. Take your time. Uh, it's a holiday. It's a holiday. Yeah, it's a holiday. Yeah. Everybody seems, you know, uh, at that time of year, they're in a rush to get to the holiday place or destination. That just adds adds to the anxiousness of people driving. So they really need to, you really need to plan and add a little bit of extra time before yeah. you set off. Yeah. yeah, I do agree with you because a lot of us, in our perception, we always think that, okay, it's holiday season, it's going to be traffic jam. So the, the anxiety is there, like we push ourselves to try and be faster and faster and forgot that actually our life is so important, eh? Yeah. Yes. So what about the actual driving? So now we've got the preparation, I've checked my car, you're all done. So in the actual driving, what are some of the things that I should really take notice of? And I'm talking about long distance here. Really need to um, 
take notice of uh, the speed is critical. Um, it's one of the biggest killers on our road is speed. Okay. Um, so obviously stick to the, the speed limits, but also um, you may need to adapt your driving dependent on the weather conditions and the traffic. Mm. So some people think uh, they can still drive at the same speed no matter what, but sometimes if there's congestion and there's been heavy rain and the roads are greasy, you need to adjust your speed accordingly. Mm. Mm. So travelling on a, on a long trip, it's really important. As I said before, the roads in New Zealand are very windy and have hills up and down. So speed is absolutely critical to watch the speed. Mm. The other part is um, the travelling distances. Uh, behind vehicles. Uh, a lot of people travel too close and that annoys some drivers. Yes, yes, I absolutely agree. This morning while I was driving from home to work to Henderson, this car at the back of me is almost like intimidating yes. me. And I know in front of me there was there was no car. But I was drive it was an AT zone and I was driving at AT one two probably and this car was trying to go so near and intimidate me and i know he's trying to tell me drive faster drive faster if i meet a car like that and this is for our communities what is the advice the advice is is to move to the left and let this person pass i was already on the left i try and move further over further over or, or slow right down to get out of this person's way and it's let very the person common. take over yeah let them pass okay. It's very, very common, and uh, myself, I, I feel that intimidation as well, particularly if someone's in a, in a big vehicle, big mm. four by four, mm. um, and they're very close. It's exactly what you said, it's intimidating, and what it does is it distracts you. Yes. So you're not concentrating, and this person's angry. Well, let that mm. person be angry, and you just keep calm and get right off the road. Move, let that person pass. You've just touched on something that... Um you said that person is angry. So uh, in today's world, we use the word road rage. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when we drive, people, they just drive off, although they, they show you signs, fingers yeah. and all. How does one in mental, psychological way deal with road rage? It's very hard. It's, it's it, not nice, you it's know. It's not nice and it's a, it happens to everyone. Yeah. Uh, and it's a natural reaction to, um, to want to respond. Yeah. Um, but my advice, the police advice to anybody is don't respond. Don't, you know, give any of the, the, the rude hand signals or toot your horn or yell because that will just aggravate people more. Mm. Um, just get out of the way. Um, that's my advice. I wouldn't respond at all. Um, to anyone who, who is uh, really angry or aggressive on the road, just move out of the way. But then talking about this road rage, sometimes mm. even when, now especially if I'm, uh, you know, arrive at a destination and I was going to park my car and someone comes and shout at me, that's the time that I ignore it and just moved away? Yes, look, if, if someone approaches your car, um, my advice is don't wind down your window and, okay. and lock your car. I always lock the car um, before I start. My car actually automatically locks, but some vehicles don't. And when I've had older vehicles, I would make sure that you lock the vehicle. Um, but if someone approaches you, uh, my advice would be if, if it means having to lose a car park, well, so be it. Mm. Uh, I'll immediately try and get out of the situation and move off. Yes. And if that person still continues to try and intimidate or continue with the road rage, that is when you would dial 111 and ask for the police, because yep. especially if you're, you fear for your safety or you feel threatened, mm. you must ring 111. Right. Uh, this is a very good advice because when I get into the car, the first thing I do is to lock my door first, mm. even before putting my hand back down. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I carry on driving. I think that's very good. Now let's come back to the driving again. Because we're talking about long distances again. And in, um, in New Zealand, what I noticed, as I mentioned before, there are roads a little bit hilly. They're not really hilly, but slightly. Mm -hmm. And so when, we, when we're driving and we see a car coming like quite far away, and I want to overtake this car, 
what is a uh, good advice of when to do it i mean of course we all say when you know it's clear you know but sometimes the definition of clear for you and i could be quite different because i think that kai is quite far away mm. what's your your uh, i've got a saying that um if in doubt leave it out so right. if you th you feel if worried in doubt leave it out yep, okay okay it's with a lot of things really and it can apply to driving if if there's some doubt in your mind that mm, I'm not sure if I should pass, don't. don't. Uh, often if you look at the road and the uh, double yellow lines or the single white lines, that's an indication. And often uh, I would look at those, look ahead as well, but also look to the left for a sign that indicates uh, how much, you know, like the passing lane is coming to an end or, or it might say passing lane ahead. Or there might be another sign if you have passed, um, you know, an indication that the road is, is the passing lane's going to finish. Those are the things that I look for. So I'd look at the road markings. Road uh, markings. Yep, I would look for the sign. And often, if I'm frustrated wanting to pass a slave driver uh, and I can't see that it's safe, I won't. And if I've got some doubt, I won't pass. When you come up to a sign that says passing lane ahead, uh, wait for that time. Uh, and there's also one that tells you when the passing lane is finishing. I actually like driving on New Zealand roads for long distances because I always enjoy that passing lane. Yes. It is so good, yes. you know, uh, because, and they're not far away. You know, you drive for a certain time and you, you, you get that sign and I'm always looking forward for that. That's really good. And also, there are lots of places in New Zealand because I've traveled around New Zealand three times driving and there are those when you enter the, the hills the mountains and it goes round and round the the most frustrated thing is the car in front of you don't bother and could be driving 40 instead on a 50k zone uh, what can I do because this person is really slow and would not move to the side mm. it's very frustrating <laughs> it is yes. and um, you know, sometimes you do, you feel like, you know, getting close and tooting to get out of the way, but my advice is um, that happens when you drive and you just have to accept that sometimes you may get stuck behind someone uh, who's being very cautious and travelling, you know, very slow. Uh, you know, you, you just have to just go with it, really. Um, yes, I use that same tactic too because uh, the way I look at things is I'm going on a holiday. I'm supposed to enjoy yes. and if I met someone who's really really slow I take it as if ah this is another part of life uh, I just met someone of that that style of driving mm. so enjoy what is there to enjoy you know so yeah that's it's good, good advice Jessica because um, you know one of the slogans we say is you know that there will be a number of people on a long weekend that aren't going to come back home because they're going to be mm. killed on the roads so take that little bit extra time your your advice is bang on yeah but we don't want that mm. we don't want anyone to be injured or killed on the roads and that's the reason why inspector scott webb is here to inform all of us on how to keep safe this holiday so what if there is a car crash because as human beings um car do ah before i go into that i want to talk about in New Zealand, on the New Zealand roads, at the side, there's always some resting areas. Yeah. So, but for us, it's, it's really, sometimes it's quite challenging to say, to admit that I'm tired, I have to stop aside and sleep. Because in my mind, I'm always thinking, my destination is coming soon. My, it's very near. Mm. Uh, it's just, a, you know, not so far away. I can manage. Tell me. Tell me what, what should I be doing? Well, what you have to remember is it only a split second uh, to fall asleep uh, and catastrophic circumstances can happen as a result of falling asleep. But you don't have to wait necessarily for an actual rest area. You can move to any uh, part of the road if it's um, not blocking someone's driveway. Mm -hmm. uh, and rural roads, often there is um, sort of a shoulder that you can move on to. And my advice is if you feel like that, move to the shoulder, um, get out and walk around. 
hop out of the car and have a walk around. Okay. Yeah, and it's, um, I mean, I've done that. Uh, even if you uh, are so tired, if you have to uh, take a power nap. Power nap. Uh, I like the power nap. Power nap. It, it works. It works wonders. I've done it yes. myself. Yes. And I think even have a power nap of maybe five, ten minutes. Yes, exactly. They're really, really powerful, yes, actually. Yep. And it really helps. And you know what? It saves lives. Absolutely. Yes, Absolutely. yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So if there is a breakdown or a crash, uh, what, can I, what should I do? Okay. The first thing, and a lot of people forget to do this, is to make sure that you and your vehicle is safe. Uh, and that means putting on the hazard lights yep. and parking your vehicle um, safely. So you don't want to add to the carnage that's already on the road. So uh, if you have to park your vehicle to protect yourself or to a person who may be lying injured, mm. you can do that. But park safely. So don't, um, don't park uh, in a way that's going to cause further obstructions. But what I say to people is put those hazard lights on. Because okay. you see it time and time again, someone stopped in the middle of the road, or and we don't know if they're going to turn left <laughs> or right, or what are they actually doing. If they're parked there with the hazard lights on, then uh, the motorists know that something is happening. Uh, for example, if your car is broken down, a, a tip we say is open the bonnet. Okay. So if you're parked on the side of the road, your hazard lights are going and your bonnet's up, um, that indicates to other people that, okay, this person is having engine trouble or broken down. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, that is a, is a good indicator. But definitely make um, yourself uh, safe first. And then, then, before you do anything else, if you can initially have a look to see that if, the, and if you're seeing that people are seriously injured or it's a serious crash, dial 111 straight away. Okay. Some people get very distracted, they, they jump out of the car, they leave their car running, uh, they leave it parked in a terrible ang angle, doors open, park your car really s as safe as you can, put your hazard lights on, get Turn out, off, switch, yep, it off. switch it off, lock your, lock your car, the keys in your pocket, and take your phone, most people have a phone yep. these days, and have a quick look at the scene, because it may, it may be something minor. minor. Mm. So if it is serious, or you can see there's people hurt, Dial one one one, and don't ever be afraid to do that because a lot of people think someone else has done it, and sometimes you can be the scene and people are waiting. Where's the ambulance or yeah. police? And no one's. Oh, I thought you rang them, or someone thought someone else yeah. has rang them. Yeah. So you won't overload the network. Um, people will say, "Where are you?" Um, you say, "We are." And they say, "Look, we've already we're, we are aware of that that incident or that crash, and we've got ambulances or police or fire on the way." You've just given me another point um, that I need to ask because I'm speaking on behalf of the communities. So on rural roads, um, long distance, and sometimes in the middle of the road, I do not know where I am. So normally, how, how do people tell the comms, the 111 calls? Okay, um, generally your phone uh, has, has got a, you know, you can, well, some people have got a GPS type thing on your phone we can tell where you are and one of the things that I've been in that situation is you just get open up your Google Maps mm -hmm. and you just look and it'll tell you your current location okay. and it'll have a road on there or, or a marker so if you can see anything that is um, you know distinguishable like you might have gone through a township or there might be um, a certain bridge or there might be a, a, a monument or something nearby uh, and if you can mention any of those things, it can help um, track you down. If you might be, um, you know, say north of Auckland, uh, well, how far, how long have you been travelling? Oh, I think I've been travelling half an hour or an I hour. Uh, and they can narrow it down. Yeah. Um, and then other people, if it's a significant event, other people calling in that might know the area and be familiar. Um, there might be someone else in the vehicle other than the injured person that you could ask where are we? See, I don't know where I am. I want to get help to you. Where are we? And it, it might be some the partner in the car saying, look, we're in, uh, you know, and we might be in Hamilton, uh, and this is the road we're on. Some people ask, uh, if there's injury, uh, do I call the police or do I call the ambulance? Yeah. Our advice is um, dial 111 and um, ask for police. 
uh, because if there's injuries, then uh, somehow those injuries have been caused perhaps by another person, mm. or we don't know. Mm. So get the police underway, because especially if it's not very clear, but different if someone collapsed in the street, that's different and it's very clear you'd call ambulance. Yeah. But when it comes to a uh, road policing or roading type situation, I would uh, dial 111 and they'll ask for which service, and you say, police. Uh, and then the police can ascertain when they get there, or they may have other calls to work out um, just what service should be required there. In particular, if it's a, uh, you say it's a serious accident, ser serious crash, mm. um, you'll have all three services will attend, police, fire and ambulance. And whoever gets there first uh, will generally say, we need police here, so, or ambulance or fire. Yeah, um, yeah. Quite often people will call uh, the ambulance, and ambulance may get there and they will see there's you know, multiple cars involved, there's, there's people who are drunk or fighting um, and get the police on the way. I like the part <coughs> you talk about as soon as if something happens, breakdowns or car crash, is to put on your hazard yes, lights. Because this is something that uh, I think usually when there is a crash, say for example if there's a crash, the first thing that go into my mind is let me come down and see if someone is yeah is injured, I would forget to put the hazard yes. light on. It's very common. And even if I have the phone, I'll be taking photographs yeah. of the crash rather than um, putting the hazard light yeah. on or locking the doors and have the keys. So I think that advice yeah. is really, really good. It's very, uh, it's very common. I think um, in the police it, um, it kind of comes automatically because we do it and we have to make sure all our vehicles and equipment are yes. safe and that's part of our role is to stop and we've got the flashing lights as well to put on. So we kind of do that automatically, but it's very common that people who aren't in the emergency services or don't have that knowledge, they, they don't necessarily do it. One of the things that um, I often get calls from ethnic uh, people is the toll away services. Mm. See, of course, when if there's a crash, people get very shocked and they in their minds they're seeking for help. It could be a passerby, it could be neighbours of that area that they had to crash. So while they're being uh, supported by these people, sometimes the car could be towed away yeah. for whatever reasons. Now, in their perception, because it's been towed away by authorities, whether it's the fire services or the police or whoever called a tow company to tow it away, in their perception, the responsibility lies on the authority who ordered the tow away to be done. So, but the fees keep piling up, which mm. they have no idea until one fine day they receive a call and say that you now have to pay $600 mm. or $700. This is where they feel up on top of the shock, the crash, and then have to deal with all that paperwork and all, and now to be told they have to pay six, $700. Mm is not acceptable and they feel really angry and frustrated. Give us some advice. Yeah, that is fair enough and, <laughs> fair enough and from time to time that does happen. Um, now the main reason that, that a vehicle would be towed would be if the owner or the driver of the vehicle gave authority to tow it. Mm. The other one would be if, we, if the vehicle has to be moved because it's a real hazard like it's, um, you know, the wheels are all locked up and, we, and it, it's blocking a lane or blocking a road. The other part is if it's clearly, uh, it's, we're not able to ascertain who is at fault in this crash and it's a serious crash and we need to get the vehicle examined. Mm -hmm. um, so if it was taken for examination, of course, you know, police would pay. Uh, if the owner said, oh, I give authority for my car to, to be um, towed because I just you know, want it to be towed because I'm not capable of driving, then that would rest with the owner. But the biggest thing, uh, is what I would suggest is ring 105. This is the new number that we have. Is 105? That's it. Yeah, 105 is a new uh, non-emergency number. And uh, if, if you haven't had any documentation given to you because you'll be in a state of shock mm. often, or if the tow truck hasn't said this is where it's going to, mm. or, or they've told you and you've forgotten, if you uh, call 105 and say, look, you're the owner or driver of this vehicle that's just been, been involved, and the crash, I've seen the, um, the tow trucks taking it away, where do I go? Mm. So, so the people on the other end of that line on the, the 105 will do a check on that number 
and they'll be able to tell you and say, oh, look, it's been logged as a tow, and it's at, at a certain company, normally within the district. Okay. Uh, and those, the tow companies are normally 24 hours, 24 by 7, uh, particularly the rostered tows or yes. the police contract tows. Uh, and then you could find out, at least you know where to go to get your vehicle. And Jessica, that does happen. Uh, sometimes people just think, oh, it's been towed, and someone will contact me one day, and you're right. Yeah. Huge fees mount up, and the police are trying to locate the person, or, um, you know, they've, they've left messages, and the, and the phone number or address might have changed. Mm. Uh, and then these, we have these huge, um, these huge bills add up. So that would be my suggestion. Is, um, so if there's a crash, <coughs> would you suggest that I call the following day, or when is a good time to call the tow company? Oh, when when you're uh, ready to, and when you feel that you're. So even if it's the next day, that's fine. Oh, that's fine. Or even the same yeah. day. Or same, even day. The same day. So if you had a crash, uh, you know, and by the time you know you might have been taken to hospital and bits and pieces, as soon as you know you feel or, or you've got someone with you, you feel able and and mm -hmm. comfortable to ring ring then because the tow truck operators. Um, they have it logged, so as soon as they leave the scene and they've hooked the car up, they will normally radio back to their base and say, "Look, we're just towing a you know a blue Mazda registration mm. number, whatever it is, and it's logged." Um, and then they will let our uh, let the police know that look, it's not a stolen car, that it's a car that's been towed. That's quite common uh, at ac accident scenes, and also. If a car's been, you know, someone comes out to a car park and, oh, my car's gone. Yeah. Oh, it's been stolen. Well, actually, it's not. It's been towed. All right. So okay. it's common. Okay. I want to talk a little bit about drinking mm -hmm. because it's, it is the holiday season and uh, people drink and then they think it's okay. Mm. It's just a glass to drive. Uh, any suggestions here? <laughs> Look, yeah. and that's common too. Because Jessica. it's party time. Yeah, they, these are all good <laughs> questions, and it is party time. But you know, uh, the safest way is not to drink. Um, yes. You now, if if you're going out with a group or your partner, um, work out before you go if you're going to have a drink. Now, with my wife and I go out, um, we'll work out before we go who's going to drink, because I I won't even have uh, any alcohol. I won't even have one glass um, if I know I'm going to be driving. It's just safer. Because often um, people have different tolerances, yes. and whilst uh, you could have someone uh, our size who could maybe have a, a, a couple of glasses, and you could have a bigger person could probably you know have a, a few bottles and may not read. Um, but it all depends on the person, the size, the circumstances, what they've eaten, time of day, and all that. Um, so everyone's different and everyone can uh, register different. So my advice would be not to have any, and then you, then you know. Because mm -hmm. what happens is you might say, oh look, I'll just have one, yeah. and then you, someone else comes over with another one. Yeah. Before you know it, you've had three. Or you're eating and you think that's okay, but everyone is so different, um, and you don't want to go through that experience. No, you know. no, no. And actually, uh, one glass of alcohol c can mean many things, and depending on what that glass is, that's you right. know, yeah, big glass, small glass, and how yes. many percent alcohol, right. and body chemistry. There's so many elements to consider if you want to drink, That's right. right? Yeah, so. Well, um, realistically, to this holiday, we do not want even one fatality or, you know, injury at all. Uh, it lies really in the responsibility of ourselves. If we drive wide awake, clear-minded, and I think also simple things like holding the uh, steering wheel with both hands rather than I see some people, you know, in fact with two fingers. Mm. And I'm sure many of us are very skillful drivers, but when we do long distances, holding the wheel properly, I find, gives me the alertness of just in case someone just did right. yeah, come towards me in a very dashing moment, mm. I'm able to hold the wheels and control it better. Mm. That's what, what I found. Because for the three times that I went around New Zealand, I drove. <laughs> wow. So I drove a van, I drove a four-wheel drive, you know, right up snow mountains. But uh, those experiences, it, it's, it, it's beautiful, New Zealand is beautiful, and I encourage people to go on uh, 
uh, look into New Zealand. However, be safe. But in Scott, uh, uh, Inspector Scott Webb, last thing is, I think I've worked with you since in Auckland City. Yeah, long time. Yeah. Yes. You've always been very, very friendly and, and very forthcoming, easy to talk to. I can go to you for anything and you're helpful. Um, are you always like that? Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah. You are? And generally, yes, I am. Uh, it's kind of why I joined, really. I always want to help. You uh, are. You, you always. Yeah. I, I've never seen you like, uh, you, you know, some people, if you ask them, they, they seem like, oh, okay, you know. But never. You're always smiley and bubbly and helpful. And I think for you to be in this role for road safety, you really have a heart for the people. So mm -hmm. I, I want, in, on behalf of the community, I want to thank you. All right. So thank you for coming to COP Chat. That's all the time we have for today. I'm sure all of you, all of us actually, have learned much today from uh, Inspector Scott Webb. Holiday is around the corner. We want everyone to be safe. Uh, have a wonderful holiday so that it's memorable in that way. Thank you. Goodbye.